Welcome to the Health Fix Podcast, where health junkies get their weekly fix of tips, tools, and techniques to have limitless energy, sharp minds, and fit physiques for life. Hey, health junkies. On this episode of the Health Fix Podcast, I have Coach Alan Meisner. He's the creator of the Thriving 40 Fitness Community, where he is providing one-on-one and group nutrition as well as fitness coaching for clients over the age of 40. He also hosts the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast, for which he's interviewed hundreds of health and wellness experts. I believe he has over 500 episodes to date and, and counting. And so Coach Alan... You know, he he wasn't born a fitness junkie, in fact, really struggled over the years to keep his fitness going. And he's got a great story. He's going to tell us about it here on the podcast. But what we're talking about today is really that whole concept of how do you get that mindset and self-awareness around health and fitness and to the point where you can make doing the fitness and the nutrition things automatic. So it's just part of your life. So there's not this yo-yoing of up and down and up and down. So get ready. We are going to talk about one of those things that just really is a struggle for a lot of folks. And Al and I are going to get real about it and dive right in. So let's introduce you to Coach Alan Meisner. Hey there, health junkies. I have Alan Meisner on and we're going to be talking about what it takes to get fit, stay fit, and keep some weight off because he and I were talking just before the podcast uh, went live here. And and one of the biggest things, and I've seen this over and over again, been a gym rat my whole life, but there's this motivation component and then there's this mindset component. And Alan seems to have mastered it, having went through, I would say, an ordeal of sorts back and forth, gaining the weight, losing the weight, and then back to gaining the weight. And I think that's so common. Because I can tell you I've yo-yoed my whole life back and forth. Like you were saying, what? At one point, it was like 20 20, uh, pounds or something that way. So anyway, all right. Let's welcome (laughs) Alan to the Health Fix podcast. Yeah. Thank you, Jane. I'm really happy to be here. That was the longest intro ever, Alan. I am so sorry. But I'm (laughs) I'm excited to talk. Don't, don't, don't. I'm excited too. I'm really excited too because this is... This is such an important topic. Uh, I was querying my group uh, the other day because I'm working on a workshop and I was like, okay, I want to speak what they need. I want to give you exactly what you need. So tell me, what do you need? Number one, bar none was motivation. Mm-hmm. But every topic, if you really kind of broke it down, you said, okay, what, what's, what's, what are they really saying? Where are we really? And I, I, I had that conversation. It was wonderful. It always came back to mindset. It wasn't that I, I don't know what to do. It was never, you know, I don't know what to eat. It was, you know, it was never those things. It's like, I know what to do. I'm just not doing it. Yeah. And, and it's funny because you're, you're, you're hitting the point. I know what to do. And, and this really hit home for me. I was at a nutrition conference with a bunch of nutritionists in Denver when I lived there 10 plus years ago. And the lady stood up and said, Clearly, we have a problem with mental health when it comes to nutrition, health, fitness, because we wouldn't have nutritionists who are extremely overweight if mindset didn't play in here. Well, yes, but no. Uh, So there's there's another component to this, and I don't want to get political, so I'm not going to go down that little rabbit hole. But okay, the guidance the guidance that's out there can often be drastically different from how you need to eat. And so don't feel like, okay, uh, this is, this is what they're saying. This is what I should eat. And I'm eating exactly what they say. My 11 servings of this and my 10 servings of that. And I'm not eating that, that, you know, that's not right. You feel it in your heart that that's not right. So, you know, that if it was alive, and you're recognizing it as being something that was generally alive recently. And, you know, we know what that is. That's meat and vegetables, fish and vegetables. Uh, then it's probably the right thing to eat. Whereas if it's in a box bag jar or can ask some questions, <laughs> but we know that we all know that we know we did not get it fat eating vegetables, meat and fish. We know that we know that in our heart, like I said, you know what to do. It's there. It's, it's, it's there. It's in your heart. It's in your head. It's there. It's the doing, it's the doing that we struggle with. 
Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And yes, I will get political for you then about my, my last statement on nutrition, anything that comes out of a standardized plan of how to eat in food pyramids out the window, eat closest to, to nature, eat closest to the cave is what I always try to tell folks on there the podcast. Close. I like that closest to the cave. That's, that's well, actually, I'm going to steal that one. <laughs> you should. In fact, I stole it from someone else. So it's, it's free. It's free reign here. Yeah. One of my, one of my pals told me about that one not too long ago. So yeah, it's, it's, it's more to it than that. And yes, we all have that, those different things for us. And, and one of these things that, that I would love to, to air out a little bit too, because I think you've probably heard this too. A lot of people will be like, well, I stopped eating carrots and bananas and, and I also stopped tomatoes because they were high in carbohydrates. And I'm going, what are you eating instead? And then oftentimes I'll get a response of all of these fake sugar type of things, low sugar, zero carbs, all that stuff. Do you get that a lot too? I do, but what, you know, I think the thing is, is because, because anyone that, anyone that knows me or has paid any attention to me whatsoever, and I'm just drilling with real food. And the interesting thing is I've, I've interviewed vegans. I've interviewed keto. I've interviewed keto vegan, keto, keto vegans. I've interviewed car carnivores. I've interviewed paleo. I've interviewed raw paleo, uh, vegetarian, name it, however you want to eat. And someone's eating that way. I asked them this one question, why is what you're eating the best way to eat? And they say one statement without a doubt, their way of eating is best because it's a whole food diet. Yep. Okay. So they, they, you go on the principle that it's, this is a whole food diet and it's vegan. It's better because the meat eaters are eating all that processed stuff, that processed meats that they love bacon. They're all over there just eating plates and plates of bacon. Now, granted, some of them are, don't get me wrong, but the ones that know their thing, they're not, they're eating closest to the cave meats, you know, basically pastured this grass fed that, and they're paying attention to the quality of their food, whole food. You ask the carnivore or why these other people, and they're like, well, they're, they're eating cereal. You know, they're, they're eating cereal and, and they're eating uh, those little, you know, treats and this and that. And, the, you know, they're, they're eating fake meats. So they're, they're so, they miss meat so much they're faking it. And, um, and so you're like, okay, well, what, what is the, the common denominator across the board? Whole food. And so you know that, and you know how you want to eat. And so whether you want to be predominantly plant-based or you want to, you know, have some meats in your diet. You want to be predominantly keto and eat more meats and stay away from carbs. That's cool, but don't replace real food with fake food for the sake of eating a certain way. Because what happens is when paleo got big, uh, then there was, you just started eating food and then guess what people came up with? paleo <laughs> snack foods. <Yes. laughs> I'm like, okay, again, you guys, you lost, you lost it. You know, the thing was, what did our ancestors eat? And they did not eat this. Okay. Then you go in and you, then keto started getting really popular on the tail of uh, paleo. And so what do you have now? Keto friendly snacks. Mm-hmm. Again, it's always going to go back to the processed food because it'll sit on a shelf for a long, long time and be stable and they can sell it to you and they can charge you more. Whereas you could go out to the farmer's market, help a local farmer by buying his eggs, buying his butter, buying his milk, buying, you know, his chickens and, and, and have a really healthy meal. Cause you could also pick up the salad with the carrots, <laughs> with the whatever, and have an awesome meal that's supporting your local farmers. And you know where it came from. You can have a conversation. How, do, how are these animals treated? What's going on with this food? And so I know we're going deep into the food cave and we're having this conversation, but the reality of it is you already know this stuff. We're not teaching you anything new. Yep. And if you're trying to justify why you would eat anything else, that's a mindset issue. Mm-hmm. You're trying to deflect, you know, the answer and you're deflecting. So if you're like, well, this is healthy because it says healthy on the label, you're deflecting yeah. and we got to get you back on path. Yeah. 
Yes. I, I like that concept of the deflecting. And I definitely was hoping you were going to kind of go into some realm of that because it's one of the things that, of course, as a doc, I see over and over again. And and sometimes I'll see the plant-based, you know, and I try to be calling them, like you said, fake food, plastic, you know, butters and plastic, this, plastic, that. So with that deflecting mindset, what is, if someone's listening to this right now and they're like, oh, I so do that. What was, what would be one thing that they could kind of look at and go, okay, how can I change my mindset around this deflection thing? What, where, what's, where's this coming from? What's happening? Okay. Well, we're, we're, if we, if we're not really doing the thing. So, uh, you know, with me, I'll give you a little bit of my background. Um, I was an athlete all my life until I wasn't. Then I was a professional. I was working. I was building up my career. I was doing great. C-suite at 39 years old in a fortune 500 company, the dream, right? Whatever. When they say work your way up the corporate ladder, I, I went two rungs at a time. I, you know, I, I was that driven to make that happen. Now, what I sacrificed was everything else. I sacrificed my fitness. I sacrificed my health. I sacrificed my relationships. And so I found myself forcing myself to take a vacation. Mm-hmm. And I went out to pro- try to play volleyball, which I used to be really, really good. Used to love the sport, could play all day, every day, and no problem. Here I was, I was in a game, was so excited to be back on the court. In the middle of the first game, I felt like I was going to die. I made it through the game, barely. I subbed out. I would have never done that in the past. And so I'm sitting there the next morning. I'm like, okay, what just happened? Where, where is Alan? Where is who I was? I lost it. I lost my fitness. I'd lost my health. I'd lost relationships. Everything was, ugh. now I have a term for it. Um, it's not the nicest term. So if you need to bleep this, you can bleep this, but I, I consider right there is my head. You fat bastard. I didn't like myself. I didn't like who I'd become. Mm-hmm. And so I decided I want to change it. And when I left that resort, cause I kept drinking the whole rest of that weekend. Um, <laughs> when I got home, I like started trying and I tried and I would get a little bit and then I would fail and I'd try a little bit and then I would fail. And there's tons of stories I could tell you about what failure looked like for me, mm-hmm. but you're right. It was the yo-yo sometimes 20 pounds, sometimes 30 pounds. Sometimes I'd be feeling pretty spry at hundred, I mean, you know, 220, 230 pounds. I'd say, okay, I'm, I'm working it just to find myself right back where I was. And so here I am eight years later, I, I'm in a hotel, another hotel room. I'm laying there and I'm hung over on a Sunday morning. And I'm like, crap, I am, I have not gotten rid of that guy. He's still here. I'm not back. I'm not anywhere close. And I've never even really gotten close if I really think about it. And then I really, I started thinking, okay, I was like, well, I don't understand. You know, I was, I was great at my career. What I'm great at my career. What, what's different? Uh, I took the CPA exam, uh, which is for accounting. And if you're, you're not familiar with it, it's a really hard exam. I mean, like 10% of people pass it the first time. It's like really, really hard. Most people take it at least three times and the average is seven. Wow. Okay. Just to kind of give you an idea <laughs> of how hard this exam is. Now they've broken it down. You can take it in parts. When I took it, you had to take all four parts at the same time, had to pass at least two to keep any of them. And so not, not cool, <laughs> not a fun exam. Like I did that. Uh, I was in the army and the infantry. I'm like, I did that. So I'm like, what, what is different between what I did there? Those, those hard, hard, hard things and this, and then it hit me like, pow, like my head just exploded. And it was, I committed to those things. There was no failure. There was just do. <laughs> And the difference between commitment and decision is like the distance between San Francisco and New York. It's thousands and thousands of miles different. And so I I realized I had not done that. And so I sat there that morning and I said, I have to commit to this. And so later I got on a uh, line and I messaged my daughter and I said, Hey, uh, you know, I know what you're doing this stuff. She was doing CrossFit and, and all these other mud runs and stuff. I said, 
I want to do this um, warrior dash with you. I want to do something athletic because what I found was the why was a statement that my daughter said to me was she was doing the CrossFit. She was doing these things and she said, I want you to come watch, come watch me. And I'm thinking to myself, that's not who I am. (laughs) I don't watch my daughter do athletic events. I participate with her. I didn't want to be a spectator in my daughter's life. She was 20 years old. I'm like, I want to be a participant. I want to be engaged with her doing these things. I don't want to be in the stands as a spectator to her life. And so that was the kick. That was the why. That was the deep thing. So when you think about commitment, it's a deep why. And then the vision of what that looks like. And for me, the vision was, I'm an athlete. I was an athlete. I can be an athlete again. I can have better relationships in my life. I can be healthy. I can be fit. And so I put that all together and I started working. And then after we finished that little uh, race, because it was just a 5K with the mud run. So it was not something that was impossible. It was close enough. It was like just 5K in the, in the obstacles. So I can do this. And then I did it. And this was around March, about two or three months later. And then I said, okay, the next step, how about Becca, let's do a tough mudder, which is 12 to 13 miles with a mud run. I mean, with the, with the obstacles in the mud and just all that sloppy. And she's like, you think so? I'm like, yeah, let's do it. I'll pay for the trip. I'll pay for the the tickets. And she's like, yes, I bought the tickets. I bought the airline tickets and the, and entered the whole thing right there done. So I had eight months to get myself ready for something that is, was at that time, the hardest obstacle course on earth. Wow. For civilians. <laughs> brave, brave. Very cool though. And, Very right. Cool. And then, and, but the thing is, I didn't want to just do it. I didn't want to just struggle, have her watch me struggle. I'm like, I want to finish with her. I don't want to hold her back. I literally want to show up to this thing ready and I want to enjoy it. And I want to participate with her. And I don't want to slow down. I want to finish. And I can tell you one of the things that comes out of doing this thing, when you reach your vision, when you make it happen, it's a memory because crossing that finish line, holding her hand, no one can ever, ever take that moment away from me. The whole three and a half hours of it, but no one can take that moment away from me because I pushed myself. I committed to task. I committed to do it. And then, like I said, there was no not, there was just do. And it's the difference between deciding you want this and doing it. And it's the commitment is the difference. Well, I think, I mean, commitment makes such a, such a, I I think people kind of a wishy-washy on what commitment really means too. And I, I think you can commit with half a foot in. You can commit with your whole leg or your whole body. I think there's, there's no. different degrees there, there, you can, but, but let me, let me put this out there. Okay. And, and then just like, uh, so, so let's say there's someone in your life that you really, really love and respect and they need you to take them to the airport at five o'clock tomorrow morning. Where are you at five o'clock in the morning? You're dropping them off at the airport. <laughs> You're at the airport, mm-hmm. right? At five o'clock, because that's when they need to be there. You're there, which means you may have gotten up at four, four thirty to make that happen. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. What if that person you love is you and you need to be at the gym at five o'clock in the morning? You, if you're committed. Right fully. You're there. You're there. Right. Right. But but, if you're and not. the whole point, then again, but you would do it for your, you would do it for your significant other. You do it for your sister or your brother. You do it for your kid. You do it for the people around you that love you love. So a commitment comes from self-love or love in general. Okay. And then the self-love is when you're committing to something for yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's the, that's the big part of this is it has to be that it has to be, I love myself enough to do these things. Mm -hmm. Now it doesn't have to be as drastic as doing a tough mutter in eight months. Um, here's another one. Okay. My grandfather was 81, 80 years old. I was riding with him in a golf cart. He loved, 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 loved golf. And at 80, he quit playing golf. And I I was riding a golf cart. I said, you want, you know, why aren't you playing today? He's like, well, I can't. 
He's like, I've lost my balance. I'm like, okay, well, cool. I said, how about we just rent some balls on the driving range and you and I just go drive some balls and hang out. He's like, I can't, I'm afraid I'll fall. Hmm. So he lost golf, his favorite, favorite thing at 80. When he got to 90, um, he started having some problems taking care of himself. So he was in assisted care and he couldn't take care of himself. So he wouldn't leave his apartment, his little assisted care apartment at 80, at, at 90. Okay. At 92, he didn't want to see anybody because he couldn't take care of himself. And if he had to go to the bathroom, he, he couldn't stand up. That's what he would right there. You kind of get the idea. Mm -hmm. He didn't want someone there to experience that. So he wouldn't allow anyone else to visit him. And he lived until he was 95. Wow. So the last 15 years of his 90 years were not the life he loved. It was something entirely different. So I tell people that I want to be able to wipe my own butt when I'm 105. <laughs> okay. So yeah. you can take something terrible. It's in front of you, your aging curve, and you can say, okay, I can control that curve if I do the right things for myself. And if you truly love yourself, you, you would say, okay, of course, I'm not going to kill my, kill my, the person I love. I'm not going to feed them this stuff anymore. I know it's bad for them. I'm not going to do the things that are bad for them right. because I know better. And so it's really those, those deep kind of emotions. And when you can break through that motivation does not pose a problem anymore. You know, we're coming into the new year and, and everybody likes to have their new year's resolutions. And, you know, I've heard different numbers. I've heard, uh, 88% fail 92 percent fail, uh, you know, but you've probably done a resolution before in your life. And then three weeks in, you practically forgot you ever even did it. And if anyone comes around and reminds you, it's like, ah, oh, no, but you're in the majority. Almost everybody fails at the resolution. So guess what? What does a resolution actually mean? It doesn't mean a whole lot. No, no. It's kind of a weak word. A lot of people will say, I lack willpower. Everybody lacks willpower. Sure. You know, it's just this normal. And it's, people will actually be like, yeah, I just don't have the willpower to quit eating sugar. I just don't have the willpower. And again, it's, it's okay. People just kind of accept. Yeah. Well, nobody has willpower, so it's okay. You're part of the majority. And so it's, it's those weak words. Decision is another one. I decided to do it. And then I decided not to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I was going to get committed. I was going to get married. And then I decided I didn't want to marry that person. But Okay. Over. Um, those are easy words to back away from, but once you've made the commitment, you're in, you're in all the way you're all in. So there's, there's not a leg. It's, it's everything, heart, head, body, everything is in this thing. And then the core of it, and I'll kind of put this out there is someone will sit there and say, well, I was doing really well, but then I had a cheat day or then I cheated. So they use the word cheat and they use that as a kind of, well, it's okay. Yeah, I cheated. So, okay. Well, you know, if you're just walking down the road and there was this really juicy looking guy there, I'm just going to cheat today. <laughs> what? No, you're committed. You, you can even say that, that he, he looks, he looks awesome. He's fine. You know, look at that, butt. um, and you could have those kind of thoughts and maybe even with your girlfriend or something, say it out loud. That's fine. But you're not going to act on that right. because you're committed and it's built on a basis of love and trust and respect. And all I'm saying is that commitment to yourself requires those same things, yeah. love, trust, and respect. That's a, I mean, that is a great, great explanation. I, I think for a lot of people, that's where we need to to focus a lot is, of course, on the self-love and the self-respect in relation to, to commitment. But I also, you also brought up something that I think for a lot of people listening to this podcast is a real thing. You know, you had mentioned with, with your daughter wanting to show up, wanting to be participating in her life. I get that a lot from women. They want to show up for their kids. They want to be the mom they, they want to be. But then there's that athlete in them from before that has all these aspirations, you know, I, I love running. I do this. I, I hear so many women say, I used to run. I'm like, well, why do you not run still? You know, and, and kind of like your grandfather, the, the golf, you know, it's, it's a matter of going, okay, what do you want to do this? Like, if this is your thing, let's help you freaking figure out how we're going to keep you doing it. That's kind of how my MO with my whole practice. So yeah. 
I like that you kind of mentioned that. And I'm guessing that's how you work with your, your clients. Yeah. What do you want? I mean, you know, it's, you got a vision and it'll change, you know, so here I was, you know, looking at, you know, basic at that point, 45 years old, my daughter saying, come watch me <laughs> do this thing. <laughs> that was a kick in the teeth, you know, uh, for, for right. prior athletes. I was like, what? No, I'm not. I mean, yeah, I would come watch if I can't do it, uh, but I'm going to be able to do it. And so there was that. And then there's the, okay, well, where am I now? Well, I live in a place called Bocas del Toro uh, off the coast of Panama. It's an island off the coast of Panama. And it's it's beautiful here. And just two miles from here, a mile, and a half, two miles, there's beaches that are just gorgeous. And the further I walk, the prettier the beaches are and the fewer yeah. people are and the more wildlife there is. And so there are days when I just start walking and I get five miles in, six miles in, seven miles in. And I'm like, well, you know, maybe I should turn around and go back, <laughs> you know, cause I got to walk it back. I walked it out there and, but I want the capacity to do that because the beaches, like I said, they just get prettier. And so from a life experience and life enjoyment and just, uh, there's nothing better for me than to be walking down that beach, you know, miles and miles and miles in my, you know, basically self, it's just meditating in nature, just enjoying that moment. And I want to be able to do that for as long as I possibly can. So I train for that. I train by walking. I train by walking further than I need to, but I live on an island where I, I know I can walk anywhere on this island. I need to be, Wow. I'm not dependent on anything, you know, it's 15 miles from one side to the other. And I know I could do that if I needed to, if, you know, if I wanted to. And so it's just the, what do you want? What do you want next? What do you want to, and then I know at some point, okay, I'm going to be in my eighties, nineties, maybe even to 105, which would require me to do some things for my health and make sure that I'm there. But again, I want to be able to do the things that are necessary to be independent and not have to rely on other people. So yes, uh, having the strength to be able to stand up when I got to go to the bathroom, walk to the bathroom, sit down, go to the bathroom, do the paperwork, stand back up and walk out. All that requires strength. It requires mobility. It requires balance. And so I train myself today to be the people <laughs> that I want to be in the future, the vision. And so I know there's an aging curve. I'm not going to be able to completely avoid the whole aging curve thing, but I can, I can smooth that baby out. Um, <laughs> I can smooth it out. And so it just takes knowing that, that if I improve my health and I improve my fitness, my aging curve will be better for it. And that's what I want. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so huge. So huge. So, you know, we were talking before we started the podcast a little bit about how you have a, a survey online where folks can kind of yeah. understand where they're at. Because I think a lot of people are like, I think I'm committed. I'm not really sure. I don't know where my mindset is. Tell us a little bit more about yeah. that and, and give us a little scoop as to what they would find there. Yeah. Well, you know, like I said, and again, you can bleep this if you need to, is that I had identified, I'd self-identified as a fat bastard, uh, back then. And in fact, if you type in uh fatbastard.org, it will take you to my website today. Um, <laughs> that's how much I identified. I bought the domain. Um, oh, that is okay. hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so the point being is because, because I knew I was enemy number one, I, I was the problem that was keeping me from being where I deserve to be. Um, I understood that that's what I had to conquer first. I had to conquer me first. And so through that, and then now getting in, and I've been training people online and in person for seven years now, what I've found is some commonalities of different clients that I've dealt with over the years of, yes, they are, they, they also are their own enemy. They're the person between them and success. But people look at it in different ways. So I'll give you an example. A mother who is the caretaker at the house will sacrifice everything for her family. She will sacrifice her health. She will sacrifice her fitness. She will sacrifice her, her, her mind. <laughs> She'll sacrifice everything for her children right. and her family and her husband. But, and she won't take a moment to do something for herself. Okay. 
And, you know, she hasn't necessarily asked, but she may also not have the support. So she decides she's going to eat a certain way, but the rest of the family is like, no, I, I want the snack foods. I want the cupboard and the pantry full of this stuff. And so she has this constant thing around her. And so I would say that's a person who's struggling with co-pilot. You know, they're, they're, they feel like they have to take care of everything else. So they don't have the co-pilot and, and they're not focused. So they lose focus because they're taking care of other people. That's a co-pilot uh, person. Okay. There's other people that are windshield people and they'll be like, you know, well, I was doing so great before and now I'm not. So they're spending more time looking backwards at all the things they've done wrong than they are looking at what they could do next. So, yeah. you know, looking back instead of looking forward, I call that a windshield person. Or there's people that basically they look at it and they say, you know, if I don't, and they know this, they know this in heart. If I don't have a big thing in front of me, then I won't do anything. Right. So these, you hear that from me. Okay. Atlas. Okay. I needed an Atlas. I need something to tell me where to go. So when I was training for the tough mutter, I had, I had a very bright, clear path to how to get there because I, I had an Atlas. And so the Atlas was the answer for me is okay. Knowing that having a big audacious goal in front of me drives me solid. Okay. So that's Atlas. There's a couple of others and you'll probably have a mix of, of these together. So there's not like you have one and I've actually looking back at my journey, I can see moments where, you know, one was bigger than the other, you know, my tires, which was the traction. I have to have, I had to have traction that if I didn't feel like I was getting traction, I would quit. So tires. I know. So again, that's another mindset that can be a primary mindset, but you also have the other. So there were moments when I was windshield which was, wow, I used to be an athlete and now I'm not. And so, you know, and then that's looking backwards, just always looking backwards. Then there were times when I just wasn't getting the traction I thought I needed. So I was at tires and then I kind of matured up to being an Atlas now. So I kind of have to put something big in front of myself or I won't do it. And so just understanding those little tendencies can help you put together the right strategies and tactics that'll work for you. So if I sat there and said, okay, well, you know, uh, you're a co-pilot person, but I want you to train. I want you to set up, a, go ahead and schedule up a, a tough mutter. So you have something big to work towards. You're like, well, when am I supposed to train for a tough mutter? I got to take Joey to soccer and I got to pick up, you know, this girl from, from hockey. And then we're going to have the pizza night, you know, and I'm the scout mother that has to bring the pizza. So I'm going to have that in my car all the way out. So of course I'm going to eat some of the pizza probably while I'm driving. And you want me to train for a tough mutter. Okay. Well, no, that's not, that's not the right strategy or tactic for you. So rather than throwing the strategies or tactics out there and saying, let's see what sticks. Cause that's what I did for eight years. <laughs> right. Go through and figure out who you are as a part of a self-awareness journey. And when you figure out who you are, the strategies and tactics that you need just seem right there. It's like, oh, of course I need something big in front of me. If I have something big in front of me, I'm going to do it. That's me as an Atlas. So you may say, I need to talk to my significant other and my children and say, okay, look, this is what I need. This is what I'm going to do. Okay. So maybe with the significant other, it's like, I need 30 minutes in the morning. Can you get the kids ready for school before you go to work? And I'm going to be down in the home gym doing my thing. Okay. And Monday through Friday, you're down in that home gym doing your thing and your significant other is getting the kids ready to go off to school. Okay. But you had to ask, you had to ask first because they won't know. But if you know, you're a co-pilot person that needs that support, then you know to ask for it. Yeah. And then, you know, to tell the kids, it's like, okay, everything you want, all those snack foods, they don't sit on the counter. They go back to the pantry. They're all in a pantry. The mom doesn't go zone. Okay. Mom's stuff is over here in the refrigerator and the freezer because the food she eats, if she puts it out on the counter goes bad. So I'm going to go to the refrigerator for my snacks and not the pantry. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. It's all about having, having the support, getting the, getting everything that you need set up to be committed. And I think that's where a lot of people overlook the, the whole process. So I think, yeah, I mean, we, we went through this and, and, and again, I, I, what I, I do want to put this preface out there, this is not easy. So if you've struggled with this, no shame, don't, don't shame yourself, forgive yourself. You know, this is a struggle. 
This mm-hmm. is not easy. If it was easy, then 70% of us would not be overweight. Right. Okay. So, you know, yes, you're in the majority right now. So don't feel bad about where you are. There's, there's where we are, where we are. So all we can really do is forgive ourselves, learn from it and, and start pushing forward with a plan. Love it. Love it. And guess what, guys? Alan has a plan for you. <laughs> <laughs> Customize one. So yes. So tell us, you know, this and and this is huge stuff because I mean, guys, everyone that's listening here, I've been up and down with my weight for a long time too. You know, it's it's nothing, there's nothing shameful. It's just is what it is and lifestyle patterns and choosing different commitments at, at different times in life. So so Alan, tell folks where they can find you how they can get a hold of this new program that you've got going on and and give us the scoop. Okay. Well, I wrote the book, The Wellness Roadmap. So a lot of what I talked about today, you can go to Amazon and buy the book called The Wellness Roadmap by Alan Meisner. It's a good, good start if you want to do that. There's the podcast, the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast. You find it anywhere you listen to podcasts. Okay. But I'm doing, and you can find the quiz we were talking about, the survey thing. You can find that at 40plusfitness.com forward slash quiz. So it take you about a minute and it's going to give you some insights that are really help you understand if the strategies and tactics you're interested in are going to help you. But I'm really excited about what I'm doing on January 1st. Okay. Cause everybody wants to start on January 1st. And so we've got a lot of things going on between now and then. So enjoy your Christmas, enjoy your new year to go do that thing. But on January 1st, I'm going to have a four hour workshop. This is not a four hour lecture for our podcast is this is literally a workshop. I'll be working with you on a zoom call. And, uh, it, it goes on the mantra of the way I look at things is I can't fix the past, but I can do something today to make tomorrow better. Mm-hmm. So I call it the, it's the better me tomorrow workshop. Okay. And literally, like I said, it's a four hour workshop and I'm going to stay on for an extra hour to answer any questions that you might have. This is going to be on the Sunday, January 1st. You can go to bettermetomorrow.com to sign up for this workshop. And um, I'm telling you, I'm going to put everything out there. I interviewed people for what they needed most for their health and fitness. Yes. uh, uh, The motivation aspects of it were huge. And we talked a lot about what that is. And so all that's going to be in there. And we talked and then I looked at almost everything else that was holding people back. And it's right there in your head. It's called mindset. And so this is, this is going to be like really sitting down and working through your mindset. This is not just me talking. This is a workshop. So I'm going to have a workbook for you. We're going to sit down and really work through and put this stuff together. So you can go into 2023 with a plan, a, an executable real plan written just for you. Oh so God. that's at bettermetomorrow.com. That's awesome. Cause as we know, plans We'll get executed. No plan. No solution there. No, no. I mean, I, I don't even mind a loss for words on that one. No plan. No, no gains. There you're, we go. You're coasting. You're trying to coast uphill. Yes. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Thank you so much, Alan, for coming on. I appreciate it. All this great info, especially talking about something that I've not talked about much on here is the mindset related to health and fitness. Thank you. Again. All right. Well, thank you, Janine. I appreciate being here and I appreciate you guys taking the time. Hey, fellow health junkie, thanks for listening to the Health Fix Podcast. If you enjoyed tuning in, please help support me to get the word out about the podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review, and just get that word out. Thanks again for listening.